Welcome back. Already, again, for another episode of Banging the Can, the Houston sports podcast that does not apologize for championship rings and things. I am your host, Ross Bolin, and unlike David Cully, I am still employed, self-employed. Holy shit, Cal actually did it. He fired Coach Cully. Down goes Cully! Down goes Cully! He was on the ropes all season, and down goes Cully! I, I honestly, while I did see it coming, am still somehow shocked because I just, just there's a lot to unpack now, even more so with this franchise than there was before. Like the it's like it's like there was a dumpster fire going already, but then somebody drove by and just threw a propane tank into the dumpster fire, like Dale Gribble, and. And now it's exploded, and we've got a real burner going on our hands here, and I don't, I don't know what's going to happen next. But just to recap, the events of this week, on Monday, Cully states publicly he expects to return, but also publicly, GM Nick Casario states that he's evaluating basically every aspect of the franchise, every, every part of the team, the coaches, the, the, the trainers, the fucking... Equipment manager, he's evaluating everything, right? So obviously that includes Cully, who has just said he expects to return. Shocking. Nobody's on the same page in the front office of the Houston Texans organization. I know. Shocking. Truly shocking. So, Monday, Casario uh, says he's evaluating everybody after Cully says he's expecting to return. Then Thursday, after days of speculation and the rumor mill swirling, and all of the nuts and bolts popping out of what little screws were left in this franchise, they fired him. It came to fruition. And while I do believe it was the correct decision, he never should have been hired in the first place, right? It's like one of those things where it's not really his fault, right? It's like, you know, for those of you who got married too young and then divorced, like, it's not really either of your faults. You were just both ill-equipped for the position that you signed up for. And in that regard, I guess you can place some of the responsibility at Cully's feet because I feel like it's like, hey, man, you kind of knew your spot 43 years into the game. You're an assistant. You assist. You're not the main guy. 43 years in, you can't just decide all of a sudden to be an alpha. That's just not how the fucking world works, man. It's just not... You got to build toward that or have it be born with it inside you. He's just not that guy, pal. He's not. 43 years as an assistant and then he steps into the limelight and gets fucking dumped on. And look, he thought he was accepting a job where he'd be coaching Deshaun Watson and that didn't end up being the case. The, the football side of it, I don't really think it's his fault. I don't think he was ever equipped to be that guy. He never should have been put in this position. He never should have been hired. But he did accept the job. He did accept the money. And he will get, I think, $8 million for one work, one year of work, which is not a bad deal. So, you know, as Sean Pendergast said on Twitter, excuse me for not feeling bad for David Cully here. He, this was the easiest year of work of his life. All he did the entire time was spin this web of bullshit positivity within the organization. They basically built a cult, a football cult. They cut anybody who wasn't interested in being a part of it and buying in, which has that there is an element of that in sports, but not the way the Texans did it. There's like normal sports shit like you got to buy in. And then there's the way the Texans do it, <laughs> which is like, if we ask a question and you answer it, you won't play on Sunday which is just not, doesn't seem productive to me personally, per se, you know, but I'm just a simple podcaster, not the head coach of an NFL organization. Thank the fuck Christ. My IQ would need to be substantially lower. Look around this league. It is a joke. It is a, it is, it is really, really sad. Like the amount of shit coaches employed. That everyone who watches football knows these guys are terrible at their jobs. Year after year, and then they circulate, and they just get fired and rehired and fired and rehired. They go to another team. They just switch jerseys, switch hats. And they're trash still. 
And it's and then we act amazed. Or you get a 43-year assistant coach and you put him in the head coaching slot of the worst team in football and you act amazed. Not Maybe not the worst team in football. The worst culture in football, undoubtedly. That part can't be argued. Maybe not the worst team. Maybe the Jags are worse. Maybe the Browns are somehow still more sad. But we are undoubtedly the shittiest culture in the NFL. In turn, like... How do you get so that's okay? So everybody's looking at Flores, right? The Miami head coach that was fired after two seasons above 500, their first two winning seasons in many years in Miami. And he has a relationship with Deshaun Watson on some level where Deshaun was, you know, obviously looking at going to Miami. And now people are saying, well, we should get that guy and then keep Deshaun. So it's two part. Back half of the podcast, I want to talk about whether or not we even want Deshaun Watson, what that looks like as Texans fans. But first, It's the coaching slot, which I don't understand why anybody would want. Like, what is this selling? What is this sell? It's, it's like when, you know, the company I formerly worked at, this is just an analogy. All right. Hear me out. Company I formerly worked at dissolved, ceased to exist. I needed to go find a new media home, right? To do my thing. This is my full-time career. And When I looked around the landscape, there wasn't anybody really appealing to like go and be a part of their thing. So I decided to make my own team. That's not a thing in sports. So when coaches are looking around the league, they don't get to go, well, I, I, you know, none of these teams look good to me. Their owners are all shit. So fuck it. I'm going to make my own team. That's not a thing. They got to pick a place to go, right? You got to get employment, gainful employment. And when you're looking around at all the slots in the NFL, I need to know a single argument, one solitary reason that someone would pick Houston. Why in the name of God would you want to work for Cal McNair? And here's what I mean. Not why someone would pick Houston, why someone of substance, anybody that we would actually want as fans, why a good coach would pick Houston is what I'm, well, that's what I'm asking. I think the only answer is it had to be an insane amount of money, maybe. But, like, I think if you look at the organization and you look at the owner in Cal McNair and the situation that has unfolded since his father's passing, and you look at the situation at quarterback with the franchise, the only franchise quarterback this team has ever had in its existence as a franchise and his current legal predicament and just general lack of fucks given th- this whole year about presenting in any positive light Deshaun Watson has failed in any way to make himself look redeemable. I just don't know how you get a coach to to look at this and go, yeah, that's the job I want. I want to coach that team, boasting the worst point differential in team history last season, a, m- a minus 172. I mean, you that that stat alone to me and the situation with Deshaun, and now Coley being fired, might make this definitively the worst season in franchise history that we just witnessed. Which is really, really saying something. And you know that. You've been through a lot. So have I. I've seen some shit. You remember Schaub's run of pick sixes? You ever see? I mean, there's just... We have been to hell and back with this team just to end up in another lower circle of hell. This is the first time we fired a coach after one season. So let's go back to the inception of the franchise with Dom Capers. Four seasons, then he's fired. Kubiak is next. Eight seasons, he's fired. Bill O'Brien is next seven seasons he's fired and that's it before cully dom capers gary kubiak bill o'brien david cully the fuck is this the island of misfit toys like how how have we only had four coaches christ it's like when you have a really bad year Like a tough year, which a lot of people can identify with in the last few. And it feels like it takes forever. Like every month is 10 months, right? It just goes by so slow. It's grueling. 
That's just life as a Texans fan at this point. Like, when was the fucking franchise incepted? 2011. No, wait, that's not right. <laughs> that's, it says we found success in 2011. Um, 2002. 20 fucking years of this shit. I'm 34, man. That's a bulk of my life. Every day I wake up and ask myself, how much longer do I want to do this? And by this, I mean pretend that one day maybe something positive will come from being a Texans fan. Now look at our offseason. Look at this shit. We got to find a coach. We got to trade Watson or... Keep him, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We've got the third pick in the draft that Casario is in charge of, and God knows if he's even competent at this point. I cannot tell. I cannot get a read. It seems like he's a moron, like he's drinking three Kool-Aids from three different Kool-Aid dispensers. It's a mess out there. Also, Cully's firing... Leaves the NFL with just one black head coach in Pittsburgh's Mike Tomlin, who was also, you know, always on the rumor mill for whether or not he'll stay or go in Pittsburgh, I feel like. Brian Flores was let go this week. One employed black coach. That's wild. Very wild. By the way, Mike Wilbon on ESPN's PTI really didn't hold back uh, on old Cal. Here's his quote. The franchise is a joke. What are they doing? Seriously. They bring a guy in, you sit there, you have a press conference, you introduce him around a big market, Houston, the fourth largest city in America, you say, he's our guy. He has no squad. He has maybe the worst roster in the NFL, and you can him after you don't even have your star quarterback, Deshaun Watson? And Cully has a record that's only one game worse than the previous year in Houston when Deshaun Watson had a great season individually. They're a fraud to me, Wilbon says. A fraud what, man? We present as what we are, a laughing stock joke of a team. We've never threatened or hurt anybody. We've never dismantled anybody's season or ruined a playoff run. We're not frauds. We are who we think we are and who you thought we were. We're the opposite of frauds. Atlanta, historically fraudulent football team. Not the Texans. The only time we were frauds is when we had Schaub and Foster and Johnson at the height of their careers, and and I think maybe even Rookie Hopkins was in there. My God, we had it all, didn't we? J.J. Watt, what times we had with likable star power before it was all handed off as spare parts sold to the saddest bidder. This fucking team. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs, making the most comfortable shorts in the world with the built-in underwear you know and love for living life and making love. It's like, why wear shorts with underwear when you can wear even better shorts with built-in underwear, thus creating less laundry, thus saving the planet, thus making you a hero who is even better looking and more comfortable? Bird Dogs, you silly bastard. But did you know they make pants as well? For these winter months, Bird Dogs does. They're phenomenal. Pants for work, pants for play, pants for golf. Their new joggers are next level comfortable. I'm a huge joggers guy. Sports! can be played in joggers. I don't know if you knew that, but I hoop in the uh, Bird Dogs joggers sometimes on my basketball hoop I've got in my driveway. Um, you know, just out there just dropping dimes to myself and making it rain. And uh, they're phenomenal. I've been wearing them for years. They're great. They get better every year. The they've color uh, ways are awesome. Everything about Bird Dogs is phenomenal. And what's more, for being a can banger, when you use the code BTC at checkout on BirdDogs.com, Bird Dogs is giving away a free whistling football, like the Nerf football you grew up and loved, uh, grew up with and loved. You know, you throw it through the air and it <laughs> whistles while it's on the way there. And uh, use the code BTC at checkout on BirdDogs.com. You're going to get a Bird Dogs whistling football with your order. So, go now. Support the podcast. This is how we remain in business and are a show. Because of sponsors like Bird Dogs. So make sure you support. Go to birddogs.com. Use the code BTC. Get yourself a free whistling football when you check out a pair of the most comfortable shorts, pants, or joggers in the entire world with underwear built in. Or if you don't want to be a rebel, they've got the pants and the shorts without the underwear built in. 
if you must. So, to close out today's show, the big question I have is, do you want Deshaun Watson back? And of course, it is a sad state of affairs that we are even considering this question, but after a what a four-win season, 4-13 four and 13 season, does the pill of having a potential uh, sexual predator as your quarterback get a little easier to swallow? And this is America, where the answer is clearly yes. But, realistically, as, you know, reasonable human beings in the year of our Lord 2022, where we're all so woke that we can't sleep, this is a conversation that we need to have. Can you root, and I guess there's layers to it too. One, do you want him back? And then two, would you root for him when he's back? Or is it, you just kind of take the wins begrudgingly? (laughs) Because let's be realistic. As we just pointed out before the break, we didn't do well his season, his last season he played the full season and had a phenomenal individual season. We were trash. Bill O'Brien got canned. So it's not like Deshaun coming back. This is the NFL. One guy a team does not make. But he's Deshaun Watson. The other option is, of course, Davis Mills and his development. And do you want to derail that? Derail it? Sideline it? I mean, I, I think the Davis Mills part of the equation is really interesting after the way he performed this season. And that he, when he showed that he's got something, that he can develop, that he could be a legitimate starter in the league as at least his, you know, floor. Now it's interesting. Now it's like, well, shit, man, I don't know if I want to mess up Davis Mills' development. The neck is out there doing his thing. Do we want to fuck that up? Do you trust Deshaun Watson to not derail in some other sh- sh- form or fashion is the other question. Because dudes like this, historically, the dude who is popping his pee-pee out at the masseuse, historically, he doesn't really learn his lesson. Something else comes along. There's some other issue. I'm not saying it'll be the same thing. I'm not saying it'll be sexual even. I'm just saying that is indicative of a behavior problem and judgment issues that the face of your franchise might not want to have. Am I right? When you balance all that, for me personally, from the gut, very early on into this decision-making process, of which I have no say, I do not want him back. I want him traded, and I never want to talk about him again. I don't want Flores. I don't want to try to save the relationship. I don't give a fuck what happens with the legal proceedings or the fucking uh, civil side of it. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Sometimes it's not even about guilt. Not when we're, in, in this case, when I'm not, I'm not the judge and jury. I'm not the one deciding what happens to Deshaun or if he should be punished or if he did anything wrong. All I can do as a fan of someone is judge their response to accusations. Judge the way their character presents when this type of thing presents itself. You know, you're in the face of adversity if you didn't do it. That's how I should feel your character presents. And that has never been the case with this dude. He's hard to like now. I don't like him. I don't want him back. Trade this fucker. And, and it's de- that's the other thing. It's a distraction at this point. To even be having the conversation, the franchise, and considering it, and the Miami coach, and all this bullshit, like, it's a distraction. And now, oh, and we don't have a helm. There's nobody at the fucking wheel, man. No coach. The, co- the head coach of the team is who the culture is built around. They talk this whole year about culture. And then they fire the head coach. And when I'm looking at Davis Mills and what he did this year and where this franchise is and how, look, it's a rebuild, man. A hard rebuild. Maybe the hardest one we've ever experienced in Houston. On any team. Because disaster struck. We were bamboozled by Bill O'Brien. Deshaun Watson gets bonked and thrown in horny jail. 
Coach Cully is a jackass. Uh, Bob McNair dies. His son inherits. It's a perfect storm of shit that leads to the team bottoming the fuck out. The plane has crashed and exploded. It's time to build a new plane. We have to have the same name on the side, unfortunately, and the same owner. But we're still going to build a new plane. And if you if you say anything about Cal McNair, say this too. People are like, oh, I cut him loose after one Did you fucking watch this season? Cully was a moron. No offense. Great assistant coach. But not a good head coach. Not the dude we want as the head of the team. I don't give a fuck who he had to play with on the field. He was a terrible coach. From a messaging and leadership standpoint, he was awful. And if you don't have that, you've got nothing. Unless you're Belichick. That's the only dude in history who can pull off being so unlikable and still likable because he just wins, baby. That's the difference. Do we just win, baby? The fuck no. We just lose, baby. Therefore, you must cut that man. And I and here's look, the faster you acknowledge a mistake and rectify it, the better off you are. Do you not agree? What you wanted him to just let it fly another fucking year? These are years. If we only get 80 of them, that's one 80th of my fucking life I just spent watching David Cully coach. I do not wish to spend a second 80th or a 40th, whatever the fuck. I can't do math, but that's not the, I'm not paid to do math. He was paid to coach football and he failed. That's the end of the conversation. Yes, he should have been fired. Thank you, Cal, for doing something. Or I'm, I'm just giving him the credit as the owner now. And God knows he might not have even had anything to do with it. Thank you, Nick, or whoever. I will not thank that bald earthworm Jim evangelical fuckstick. I won't even say his name. He's Texans Voldemort to me now. But God, we're in a bad spot. It's disgusting. Where I literally had the thought, I was like, maybe we should just get Deshaun back. And then like the little angel on my other shoulder was like, what's wrong with you? Do you have no soul? And the devil on the other side was like, you fucker, we're sick of losing football games. And I don't, I don't, I'm just somewhere in the middle. Like, can't we just not have a quarterback that's so horny he gets bonked? This fucking guy. If he comes back, is it like when Josh Hamilton came back to the Rangers and they had to strap somebody to his leg to make sure he wasn't doing heroin? Are we going to have to get this guy a fucking carrier to make sure that he's not off trying to hunt masseuses? Is that the plural of masseuse? Or is it Maasai? This is what this team has done to my brain. I have the brain scramblies because of Texans trauma and being Texans triggered for too many seasons in a row. I can't believe we don't have a coach again. We're sad. We're just a sad team. But man, I'm still glad they fired Cully. I hope they trade Watson, and here's to put a positive spin on the end of this thing. If there is hope for this franchise to become legitimate again, this is it. This is the the only final opportunity, in my opinion, to reset the board and right the ship before it's another decade of sadness. We're 20 years in with very little to show for it. If Cal can get Andre Johnson to sit with him in the booth and also fire David Cully, does he have the wherewithal to hire a new leader, a new head coach that can use with Casario the number three pick, whatever haul we get for Deshaun Watson and the existing roster to build something that is watchable next season. It's not so fucking bad that it makes me want to gouge my eyes out and throw them. I think the answer is maybe. Maybe. And maybe, baby, that's enough for me. Follow us everywhere at Banging the Can on TikTok, at Banging the Can on Instagram, at Banging the Can on Twitter. I am Ross Bolin. You can follow me at WR Bolin on Twitter and Instagram. 
My company, Bolin Media, is based out of Austin, Texas. I was born and raised in Houston. If you'd like to hear about my background and why I do this show, listen to episode one of this show. Uh, more Bang in the Can coming next week. Make sure you support our sponsors, Bird Dogs Today, birddogs.com, code BTC for that free whistling football with your order of bird dog shorts, pants, underwear, built in, not built in, your call. What's going on with the Rockets? Shingoon returning to the lineup soon. I see him going crazy on social media, wanting to be out there. I like that. I bet on the Warriors the other night, and they got absolutely smoked by the Bucks. That was incredibly unfortunate, not fun to watch. But Klay Thompson is back, which is huge for the NBA as a whole. Happy about that. Next week, we'll discuss some more broader, bigger sports stories. Today, we had to focus on Houston and the Texans in particular with the huge news. Hope you enjoy your Friday. Find a way to enjoy the weekend. Maybe unplug from the Texans for a little while, you know? Just trust me that I will be back next week with another show to tell you whatever has happened, whatever you need to know. And that's that. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. Tell everybody you know about the show. Again, I am Ross Bolin. This is Banging the Can, the Houston Sports Podcast. It does not apologize for championship rings and tings. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your folks. I'll be back soon. Until then. H-Town, stay down.